The title Dark Field Analysis comes from a um, um, method in alternative med medicine where you read and analyze a drop of blood under a specific microscope called the Dark Field Microscope. And the Dark Field Microscope is a microscope that inverts the colors, or actually inverts black and white, which means that you can read the contours of the red blood cells, the bacteria, and all the things that are in the blood in a much more clear way, so you can see it. And what is important with dark field analysis is that you see it living. So I had a dark field analysis um, analysis made on me. Uh, and you take a drop of blood, you put it under the microscope and you look at it, so you can look at it in real time. You see how, the, how is the milieu of the red blood cells, etc. So you can get a lot of information on the quality of the blood. It struck me as a, as a, as a title because of its, let's say, both scientific but also very poetic um, sound. Uh, but more particularly in, in relation to that experience I had of having my blood analyzed, which was for me a very um, existential experience actually of um, looking into your body and being a, a kind of observant of your own body at the same time as you were inside of your body. So it was, it, it was for me a very estranging, um, yet profound experience of looking into yourself, uh, diving into yourself. So the title was actually there from the beginning and, and the topic of blood uh, slowly entered the project. At some point we decided, oh, okay, maybe the conversation that we have in this, in this performance, the exchange between these two guys should be always uh, around blood. The story uh, is, uh, belongs that the doctor who did this to me was a man that I had fallen in love with. So it was also, I think, contributing to this um, very particular time in my life of meeting somebody new, uh, having a strong encounter, falling in love, and at the same time them also, or him also, um, analyzing me or me being in that, that patient-doctor relationship to him. We started uh, with, I think, like a clear vision of Yefta that he wanted two performers to be speaking and talking in a carpet and naked. That was like his vision from the very start. One of the starting points of the uh, project was this um, idea of encounter. Like what happens when two people have not only a meeting, but an encounter. So what happens with that kind of depth of exchange? We started like very lo-fi, very cozy at home uh, at Yefta's house. Um, just like starting to have conversation practices. Here I wanted to bring in very clearly the idea of words, very clearly the idea of verbalizing. In the beginning, I thought this was going to be a pretty s straight out text piece that was about two people conversing, where the main material would be words. Well, in the text also, Yefta was engaging with us, so how Roger was saying, talking, but then physically we were together working there. In the beginning, it was really, everything was coming from improvisations that we were uh, engaging in together. So we're working, on, we've been working on these um, different kinds of being, different kinds of presences, and the human, very clearly, the, what makes us human and what makes us, is also distinct from what makes us animal, but the animal is also there as something, as, an, as a kind of being. 
the idea of moving in a certain kind of animalistic way. So we started from this um, movement quality, let's say, improvising also in the space. They became very influential, like their characters, their way of interpret or interpreting something, their, their qualities became very influential to actually how this piece progressed or how the project uh, progressed. Somehow throughout the process, then of course, like more like structuring came um, we started to organize the text, but always together. That was also very um, exciting, I would say, because um, the material, like, we actually didn't have to appropriate the material. The material was like was coming from us, and uh, so it was from the very beginning personal. And uh, the conversations were like uh, were about our lives, or like things that we would think or say or. Um, imagine. Juan Pablo in especially started to have a very precise and uh, curiousness towards this synthetic. So that that made that made also the shift between them or the the discrepancy between them grow. And at some point in the process, um, there was a clear decision. Uh, taken on that one should be one thing and the other one should be the other. I think it's also uh, the way that we reacted to those qualities or like how our bodies were like relating, vibrating them, uh, resonating with them. And I think also the, um, the tension that would appear when we would both sit there here and, and interact with each other being so different from each other became also much more exciting than this uh, both being everything or like embracing both. But I think we immediately felt like that it made a lot of sense. Uh, sound as choreography, light as choreography, the material as choreography, they all start to again blend in and become also dominant in this. And on top of it also this idea of that the voice starts to sing, the voice starts to become an expressive an other expressive mode, another, yet another reaching out of words. I think it was already the first working period between uh, the period where Jefta worked with Roger and Juan Pablo that they used a couple of songs and we found out then at least the way that uh, it could function in the sense that uh, there is a certain fragility in, in somebody naked on the carpet on this uh, observation space where the audience is sitting around. I think the, the sound is slowly and also quite repetitively there. It's like a heartbeat almost. It's something that brings you and brings you on, it rem but also continuously reminds you of your own body. Um, the sound slowly gets more and more and more focused. It starts to play more with color. It starts to play with uh, a lot of uh, contrast. Um, it, I mean, obviously, the light and sound are very much the factors that can make this kind of absorbed um, concentration possible. This idea of having audience on four sides was there. And this gives, of course, a very particular view, a, kind, a very particular looking onto something, into something. It could almost be like an anatomical theater or something, or an arena. The challenge became 
together with Mina, with the lighting designer and Tiefta and the performers to somehow find the, the dramaturgy that would fit Yefta's idea of, uh, of this world, this performance that he wanted to, or he had envisioned. And it meant for the sound that um, we in the end used two songs as, as a basis for the whole soundtrack. And then the idea was to be able to set a space for their dialogue, a sound space that could move into a song, like a, almost like a musical. And these two songs that we have used um, allow for a certain repetitive quality. They are um, uh, compositionally, harmonically quite minimal and simple. So uh, I could use them as both a, a basis for a sound world and let them grow into a more expressive uh, together with the voices. So it is about those repetitive qualities that uh, lend them what you said, uh, trance-like hallucination-like uh, state. That moment when life suddenly departs from the body. Of course, it's also very visual. There's something very visual. There is no blood on stage, and in the whole performance there is no blood, but they are talking about blood. And there's also like the, the piece is full of colors. Uh, colors come back in the conversation, also in the, in the light. I feel almost that at some point in the piece, you are perhaps inside of the body. And a lot of people talk about, I don't know, the materiality. It, it's almost like a painting in front of you. It's a 3D painting in front of you. Their qualities uh, are spilling over into the other person, become each other, contaminate each other. There's a mystery there that, it, that I think it's very exciting for people that uh, they can, they can grasp, grasp something, but at the same time, sometimes it kind of disappears or like fades away. So like they're all the time trying to understand what is actually going on or like what is exactly that we are in relation to each other or individually also. At some point in the piece, I think you also are quite lost like you're quite lost in, in time and space. The coordinates somehow don't anymore um, make sense. I don't feel that the piece lands somewhere. It doesn't um, land. It, it's not a progression that goes from human to something else. It's a, it's a progression that somehow weaves different kinds of being and how they create tension between each other because being with something that you don't know will already be something else. It's about that um, losing oneself in, in maybe things that one did not know or things that one did not know of oneself. This idea of, of diving into oneself, this idea of taking a better look, taking a deeper look and through that, it's not scientific anymore. It's, it, it's, uh, it's experiential, it's uh, internal. <laughs> <laughs> 